All right, it's midnight, and I know it's a little bit late to be doing this, but we have to finish this pass through because this is my main system. The ultimate system setup is what this has been titled. This is stream number three. Um, the last stream, we did a lot of virtual machine QMU setup. We got most of that going, started doing some quick pass through type stuff and uh, blacklisting some uh, of the cards and getting them ready to be passed through, but we hadn't quite got there. Uh, we were working on getting Windows set up. So in that time, since the last stream, uh, I went ahead and installed Windows because everyone's seen Windows installed before and just setting it up in VM is pretty easy. So I did that. And then the other thing I did was created a bridge for this network. So the virtual machine would sit on the same network as my host machine really important to do just for VNC capabilities. So that's the big things with that is VNC to uh, get into the machine because we're gonna lose all video, even like, you know, QXL and, and Vert IO, all that's gonna go away because once we push everything to this GPU, that's what it's gonna wanna output video to. And we still need to be able to get into the system. So uh, the big thing is auto log in we don't want to get stuck on the front of the uh, page wanting to log in with like a pin or some crap like that. So obviously I, I decided to just blow out the whole window system and just start from scratch. So we have a good auto login and I don't have to worry about that. So it'll just throw it on the desktop. No matter what we run into a problem, we can force it off, force it back on all that's good. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else that we, we have set up uh, from the first stream, obviously, we're, we're doing this based on Arch with Plasma 6. Although I might switch this to Hyperland or even DWM is kind of like one of my favorites. Uh, we, we might, we can bounce around. This is very versatile setup because it is based on just vanilla Arch and everything's just kind of sitting here. So that's just the overview of everything going on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Vert Manager here and show you our system that we have. The Windows 11 system is what we're rocking. Um, as far as everything, it's going UEFI. Uh, one other addition from the last stream as well, We I, I went ahead and did a pass through of TPM as well, just so it's, it's passing through the same TPM chip. It, I was actually using a prior Windows install and it needed that, and I, I just it got omitted from it. Um, so that's one thing we'll, we'll do. We'll boot this up just so everyone can kind of see the progress where we're at. So let's just go ahead and start it and boot in. And the, the boot process is actually pretty fast. So you'll see for a VM, this starts up fast. <laughs> Love, probably around five seconds or so, uh, something like that. So a very, very quick launch in. Uh, we have all virtualization enabled as well. I did install Vert IO tools, so we do have the capabilities. So if we're outside the box and we're, we need to manage the system, very easy to just send an actual shutdown command and not force it off. I wanted all those things working uh, so people could see everything. But as you see, everything's set up to where it should work pretty darn well. Um, Let's go ahead and pull the IAP of this system as well, just to see. I think last time it was 135. We'll see if that's a static or not. I know these IPs and bridge sometimes can change, but usually not too bad. Yeah, 135. So 10.0.0.135 is what this one's gonna be. This system I'm on is the same subnet and everything, so we won't run into any problems. Auto launching right into here. So if we close out of this with this system running, we should be able to just do Remina. And we got Studio VM already here and I can connect and we're back in. Obviously it's a little distorted because it's just a VNC, uh, just a crap connection, but uh, I can shut it down and actually manage the system from a VNC without actually having video on the box. So it can be completely headless. And that's, uh, that's the idea behind this. So we'll let this shut down with it shut down. Uh, yeah, we'll close that active session, come back into our vert manager. All right, so we're good. This is our starting spot now to actually pass through the GPU. That's the number one thing in this stream is doing that. So we've already used quick pass through. We should be able to just open this up 
go into information, kill this video. We're just going to say vert.io, goodbye. Uh, well, well, actually, it's not even allowing us to do that. Hmm. I think we can just go none. Apply. So no video. And then what we do is take this. We're going to go PCI host. And we're going to want, I think it's 75. Everything in the 75 ILMU group is a RTX 2060 is what this whole thing's going to have. So let's grab that. And we're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry for the late live stream, guys. I'm just, I wanted to get this done. It's something that I cannot get anything done until this main system is up and going. So I am finishing this pass through and we are recording all this because I need it done. So we're going to get there today, tonight. I'm not sleeping until it's done. God, I hope this goes well. <laughs> Can't be worse than the 5 a.m. stream I've done before. Midnight streams. I actually usually do pretty good overnighters. Anytime I've ever had an uh, issue and I've had to stay up for a couple days straight, I'm usually pretty solid. Um, although that was like eight years ago, last time I had to do it. So <laughs> I'm a little older now. Uh, let's see. All right. We got our dummy plug. This is just a dummy HDMI. I'm plugging into the 2060. And that way when it boots up, it thinks it has a 4K monitor connected to it. We can change everything. So we'll see. We'll just see. Okay. 2060 plugged in, ready to rock. We got the dummy plug in. We've got the PCI. And now the moment of truth. We're going to boot into it. So we'll start it up. You'll notice we're not going to get any feedback here other than the fact it's on, basically. So we'll look here. We'll just keep an eye on the graph, which can't really see. But the eye on the graph right here. Um, let's see how it goes. So it should already be on the desktop. And now we go right into Remina. Should be able to just uh, go Studio VM and crap. Well, <laughs> uh, <sighs> well, yeah. Guess let's disconnect it. Let's let's come back into the open main window. See, oh oh, oh there we go. Okay, good. We're good. Now, if we go into Device Manager, should hopefully get. 2060 don't see anything yet this PCIe device we're gonna do let's try like an NVMe or NV clean install so I don't want to use any GeForce crap on this I want to keep this system very very clean um, let's just do an IRM and what we're gonna do is pipe into IEX and we're gonna have this it's gonna be sweet so if we look at it, we should have MV, I think, I think it's in the, yeah, MV clean install. I'm just going to install that. Once that's installed, we'll use it to install the NVIDIA driver. Yeah. If you're unfamiliar, like if you use the like GeForce experience app, you usually lose about 5% uh, performance just because it uses just a ton of telemetry there's a uh, shadow play. There's a bunch of extra garbage on your NVIDIA, uh, baked in your NVIDIA thing, which is hilarious because most people that have like an NVIDIA card want, you know, want really good gameplay. All right, blocking. You may go online, install the best for there. Uh, I think we're just going to go display driver. Oh, all right. Just going to go display driver and don't think we're really going to change anything else. Although I think we need USB-C because it is a GeForce 20 series. Um, I don't want any audio and physics. I don't think it's really even needed. So let's go ahead and hit next and just grab those bare bones. <laughs> Eli, you're using uh, Notepad++ for scripting games. You know, I, I really like I've been using cursor right now, which is like just a, a fork of VS code and it just like integrates like uh, chat GPT and some other stuff. I actually like it. 
It's not so bad. If you're a VS Code user, you might try it out. But if you're just wanting like a bare bones editor, usually if I'm just editing one file, I still like to use Vim from the CLI. If it's just one file, uh, it gives you a lot of options. So I kind of, I kind of like that. All right, we're going to go disable telemetry and unattended install. All right. Oh, what worked at the end? Uh, at the end of the last stream, Windows bombed out on us and it basically corrupted. So I just did a fresh install. Uh, this is the fresh install. So that's where we're picking up on this stream. <laughs> By the way, I use Vim, if you didn't know, on my Arch system. <laughs> uh... Oh, no, 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 I, at Benji, I took a break, went and ate. Uh, me and the family are actually going to be doing some Kung Fu Panda 4 tomorrow. And I was like, I don't have time to get a good live stream in. So I was like, I'll just sacrifice a couple hours of sleep tonight and get this done. Because I don't want to get this, I don't want another day going by without this being fin finished and completed. So that's the reason for the double stream, so to speak. I normally don't do double streams, but like I said, this is kind of a top priority because it's my main system and I really have a lot of videos I got to get done. <laughs> so it's like, okay, ultimate system, it's it's got to happen. So come hell or high water, it's going down tonight. We're going to get to a spot where uh, we'll have it all ready to rock. Yeah, you were right, PSI. Scorched Earth was the way to go. Uh, we also, uh, the only modifications I made to the Scorched Earth brand new install of Win 11 was uh, adding vert IO drivers and all the virtualization to it. Um, what else have I done? And then also bridged, bridge, bridge networking. So we'd be on the same. Whoa. Whoa, doggies. Uh, can we scale that, please? Let's just uh, scale that. Okay, uh, can, wow, all right, uh, it looks a lot better, <laughs> uh, do we have, okay, let's just disconnect and reconnect, sometimes VNC, when you have a drastic, uh, resolution like that, sometimes if you disconnect from VNC and then reconnect, it'll give you it back, okay, that, that worked, gravy, it's wonderful. All right, so that should be done now if we go into our device manager, go into display. Worked great. Hot damn. We're off to a good start tonight. 2060. I swear, you know, I should just stop doing any kind of morning stream and just be like, you know what? I need to do like a two or three hour midnight stream. I always do better at nighttime. It's like a proven fact. Less things go wrong. I don't know why. Just like my brain works better. And I just luckier. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll all go to sleep and forget everything. That's that's probably going to happen. So now we have our 2060 in. I think we give it a reboot. Let's see what, uh, what do we end up on the display settings here? Uh, what was the orientation? 1080. Perfect. All right. Perfect. 1080. Let's give it a reboot. And I think it, VNC will cut out on me, so that's okay. And we'll go. <sighs> All right. So this will cut. We'll just go ahead and disconnect. Give it uh, five seconds for the full reboot. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And then we go just reconnect. Let's see if it pulls in. Might be 10 seconds before VNC servers launched. Let's see. So 10 seconds. Let's go reconnect again. Yeah, about 10 seconds really from a full reboot. At least before it loads on the desktop and loads the VNC server. So now we have that going. Now we need looking glass. This is where the magic happens because we don't want to be doing everything through... Uh, Looking glass, let's just say Linux. It's looking dash glass.io. So we're gonna download this. Um, we're gonna go Windows host binary. 
grab it. We'll see what we do for the audio as well. That's always going to be kind of an interesting setup or, you know, to, to tackle us. All right. Looking glass setup. Next. Gree. And this uh, Ivish MIM driver. That's always a little bit weird. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do desktop shortcut too. Okay. Looking glass host is in. So we've installed the card. We got the looking glass host in and that that'll auto launch. I believe let's see. I think we might have to do an auto start. Uh, let's just check services.msc real fast for the looking glass and looking glass host set to automatic. So if we hit start here, does it start? Nah, yeah, you gotta, we're going to have to reboot. So let's reboot again. Classic windows. Needs a reboot for everything. Yeah, you know, when I was younger, I used to not sleep at all. I was always a late, late, uh, you know, all the way up to the wee hours. I won't ever tell my kids that, but yeah. I played plenty of overnighters. <laughs> We're like, oh crap, the sun's coming up. I better get to bed. <laughs> back in uh, probably, yeah, probably my 20s. I remember playing EverQuest back in the day, back in the early 2000s. And I remember one time I played all the way through the night till about like nine, caught a 30 minute nap, and then I went to work at 10. That was a fun day. <laughs> all right, we'll disconnect from this guy. That disconnected. <coughs> we should have Windows 10. Once it gets to like this flat line right here, usually that's safe to reconnect all right and then we should have a looking glass here let's check uh service.msc maybe looking glass service and launches huh i'm not sure on that looking glass hmm let's take a peek at our history here so this was a release candidate um i want to say i just got the latest stable I think we need to probably go, hmm, B6 was the latest, and that's what we installed. Maybe we need to go to B7RC1. Let's just uh, do a documentation here and just see what all in, is entailed for this. So we have that going. I think we can close this out. All right. And... What we're going to do now, looking glass tutorial. Oh, let's see if we have install. Let's just go to the official installation guide, the B6 documentation. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually just shut this down. We're going to just use the shutdown command and this should actually shut down windows using the IO tools. Sweet. And it did. So now with these shut off, we can start modifying the XAML. So if we go here, we're going to grab and modify this, which basically what this does is it opens up a frame buffer so that we can copy back and forth, basically all the images being displayed from our GPU. And what this does is it gives us that native feel. So we could like do gaming with no lag or latency. So we'll edit this, add the following to the libvert configuration inside the devices section running Versh edit. So we'll do, go here and let's go uh, sudo versh list. Oh, uh, dash all, I think. Yeah, okay. So then we just do sudo versh edit when 11. Um, sudo export editor equals invim remind me to make a global editing variable for invim <laughs> uh all right oh it's still not allowing me uh, let's just go sudo shoe we'll just switch to root uh, and we're just gonna grab this and then verse edit win 11. Okay, so we'll go to the devices section. So 
So here's our devices. We'll go to the end of the devices section. Right down here, we have Mim Balloon. We're just gonna insert that and then toss looking glass. So if we look here, that's the model. Uh, let's just, I'm trying to get the spacing down just right. All right, and that should give us looking glass. Okay, 32, if you're using QMU directly without libvert, the following arguments are required instead. Uh, we are not. If you change the size of the starting or remove this, you'll need to recreate the correct size. All right. I don't think we need to change that size for 32. Hmm. Yeah, for 1080p, uh, 1080p is roughly 25 megs. And by default, we were just doing 32. So that's fine. Uh, if we were doing HDR, which we're not, we would just change that around too. Or if we were doing 4K, we'd go up to 128. That's kind of cool. All right, next is to fix the permissions for dev shim a looking glass. Uh, this is, you can use system temp files to create the file before running your VM, grant the necessary permissions, create the new file in etclookingglass.conf and populate it. Huh, okay. For the UUID, we're gonna just change user to Titus. So we'll just take this, copy, sudo vim, and we'll grab this, come over here, and paste it, and just come back to here, Titus. Save that out. All right, cool. That one's done. Keyboard, mouse, display, audio, man, going good. Uh, the, this is, I'm not really gonna worry about. Ah, oh, crap though. Looking Glass makes use of the Spice protocol to keyboard, mouse, audio input, and display fallback. Um, yeah, this causes input latency. Okay, we'll definitely fix that. If you use Spice to give your keyboard and mouse input, the keyboard sync support, you also need to have a graphics type Spice device then find your video set mode type vga if you can't find it make sure you have a graphics device remove the input tablet device if you have one all right let's make these changes so under video we have none let's just put that to vga apply we already have display spice tablet we will remove and what other modifications does it want create an input mouse vert io input type keyboard vert io okay so we'll grab a keyboard and mouse input uh this one and this one's both ps2 so we actually need to change that go input and we're gonna go vert io keyboard finish and then we also need a mouse there's usb mouse hmm Let's see if we can't change that. Let's cancel this. And I don't think we can actually edit this mouse. Well, that's interesting. Uh, since we don't have this option, we're gonna have to manual edit the XAML file. I don't feel like grabbing a verse edit anymore. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna hack that. Input type bus for IO. I think we can just do that through, through here. All right, let's, add this and what we can do if you ever want to edit the entire thing just go overview and then let's find the inputs directly in here it should be under devices and right here we have mouse keyboard and then that's so i think we can just grab this paste and we'll have the vert io and hit apply then we have uh details vert io mouse don't know about leaving these PS2 ones. I almost feel like editing them out, but I'll leave them for now. And we already did the Vert IO Win drivers prior to doing this. To enable audio support, add a standard Intel HDA audio device to your configurer as per below. All right. So let's grab sound. That'll go into the devices section as well. 
And we'll also do, uh, I think the keyboard synchronization, synchronization also automatically happens as well. So that, that won't be a big deal to do. So let's edit this, come down here and, oh geez, where are we going to put this sound? I feel like putting it below keyboard and mouse and TPM. So let's put it right over here below the keyboard and yeah, we'll just add that. I'm going to say sound, sound, little indention and then audio apply. Audio ID one is used multiple times. Okay. Where's the other audio? So there's another audio somewhere in here. Audio one type none right here. Audio ID. So we'll just take that out. Apply. Perfect. Yeah. The contrast in the XML editor blows a hundred percent. Like what are they thinking? So now we have our sound ICH right here. We have the spy server. Moving on keyboard synchronization. I don't think, I mean, it's cool. I guess we could add it uh, spice VMC serial. And I want to say this is actually here by default. You don't actually have to add it. If you go into the spice server, where's that at spice right here. Does that have anything? I think no, no channel spice VMC but I think you can add the channel direct. Ooh. Yeah, let's do that. So if you look, you should have a channel spice agent spice VMC. And if you look at the XAML file, you should have all of the synchronization. So we should be able to just go finish. And that adds that one. I've, I've done that manually. You, you don't have to do it manually. I think uh, they mention it here, but that's an easy one to finish. Mim balloon model. Oh yeah. Cyrus. Thanks for coming, man. First time catching me live. All right. This is a late one for me. I don't normally stream this late. Usually I'm in the afternoon, but we have to get some stuff done tonight. So I was like, I gotta get this Vert uh, PCI pass through done so that I can start doing windows videos. I don't want my windows users thinking that I'm using Linux. So we're doing full pass through for everything. And then when people see my windows, they're going to think, oh, he's using windows, but I'm really using Linux underneath windows. <laughs> uh, it'd be fun. It'll be fun though. All right. Mem balloon, the model reclaim memory from this growing balloon inside the guest. However, this device can cause major issues with VFI pass through setups. It should be disabled. Find mem balloon tag and set the type to none. So let's go into our overview. And now we need to hunt down in this crappy font with terrible contrast. Mem balloon. Where are you at mem balloon? Let's see if I can catch it. If I catch it in the first pass, it'll be a, oh, well, look at that old member loon right here. Um, I thought we added this when we added the shim for looking glass. Let me just check real fast. No, no, we didn't. So mem balloon just needs to be consolidated. Cool. Well, that's easy enough. Let's come back to it. So we'll just take all of mem balloon right here and Bam, done. Ubuntu so fancy still. Nah, man. Nobody uses Ubuntu anymore. Gosh, that's uh, that's old old news. Arch is where all the cool kids are at these days, right? I don't know. We should probably do a poll in chat just to see. All right, I think we got Mim Balloon going uh, at none. <laughs> Ubuntu so bad. Some might say it's the devil. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh man, Jaro. No, just use Arch, man. If you want to go Debian, just use Debian. You know, that's what I'm, my thing is. All those little forks of that. Just, just use use the the granddaddy, the grandfather of it all. That's that's where the magic happens. 
I think you either choose Debian or Arch, you know, depending on what you're feeling. You know, you want a little more stable, a little older packages, a little more of a good even footing. Uh, you can't go wrong with Debian. You want to have a little more fun, be on the bleeding edge, have uh, do some bunch of cool stuff. Uh, you can't really go wrong with Arch either. Uh, everything else is just noise. That's just my that's that's my take. Uh, let's see. Do we have anything else? Additional tuning. Don't assign all your CPU cores. Yeah, dur. That would be dumb. Uh, ensure correctly pinning your VMs V threads through your CPU. Yeah, the topology is always screwed up in QEMU. That's a good tip. We've already done that. If you're using NUMA architecture, we are not. Just because your GPU is in a slot doesn't mean an X16 slot, so it runs slower. Yeah. Uh, well, unless you're using a Xeon server board like I am then we know damn sure it's this x16 slot so it's a it's a beast uh be sure to set your cpu model type to host pass through so that your guest operating system is aware of the acceleration features your cpu has uh let's take a look at that i'm not sure on look, let's see do we have cpu placement static uh, yep 16 and i already did the topology uh okay host type i'm not sure if i've ever set that variable but uh yeah, it's worth checking out mode custom yeah host pass through cpu mode house password check none uh migratable on topology yeah perfect yes perfect all right i think we're good so now we get all that uh we have the host application captures frames from the guest OS and then spits it to the base one. We downloaded the pre-built binary, done and installed. For Linux, you have to do the host application. can be Kyle and is somewhat functional for Linux, currently considered incomplete. Uh, do we want to try it through AR or do we want to do a manual build? I mean, I think we can try it through the AUR. I don't know, though. Let's see what, what what packages we have for Looking Glass. Uh, Looking Glass. All right, for Looking Glass, we got B6. Man, that's orphan. That's super old. RC module, DKMS, RC host, host git. That's uh, R5, Looking Glass, Looking Glass git, B6, R15, Looking Glass host, B6-7. That's right. And then we got looking glass, which is B6 right here. Um, why is there two? Is that the same one? There's looking glass and looking glass host. I would imagine you'd go looking glass host because that's what this is. This is the client application. This is the host application. Okay, so obviously the client's going to be Windows. The host is going to be here. Let's try it. I don't know if this will work. I think we're going to stick with Arch. I think uh, the days of just flipping around is pretty much coming to an end. I really wanted to just have fun. And I, I looked, I kind of did some soul searching in this clean out and getting all this whole space set up. I was like, I think at the end of the day, I have the most fun in Arch. And that's why I'm picking it. I think that's uh, kind of what I came down to. So that's why I was, at the end of the day, I was like, let's just do Arch. <laughs> so many betas running Windows on Twitch. <laughs> hey, we're running Windows too, man. We're doing some PCI pass-through. I'm going to make all the Windows folks think that I'm running Windows. But really, we'll know the truth. It's just going to be a PCI pass-through with looking glass. Ah, I know. Dual boot's the easy way out. That is the easy way out. I've been doing dual boot for a bit. And then I finally got like a super system set where I'm like, hey, uh, this will work. All right, here we go. We've got the host. It looks like Looking Glass host is now online. We have all our edits done and optimizations made. We're going to go ahead, fire up the VM, Windows 11. We're going to just take a look. Once the graph flattens out, we'll... Uh, once this graph flattens out, we'll go ahead and tap into it. I want to see if the looking glass 
uh, service starts automatically this time. Yeah, you really can't beat the dual boot. It, it, it's the easiest way. It's, if anybody asks me, hey, I want to use Windows and Linux, I'm like, cool. Just get another drive, slap that in there, and then just when you want, boot from that other drive. And I've, I've set that up on all my laptops, those types of things. I just wanted something a little more special for, for this system, for the ultimate system. This system's roughly about $10,000, so not really for the faint of heart. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to recommend this to anybody. This is going to be the most ridiculous setup in the world, but it's going to be damn cool. All right, so now we have VM Win 11 working. We're going to go ahead and connect to it through VNC. Now, with the VNC, I want to just check for, uh, let's see, did, oh, what do we got going on here? Come on, scale that. Can you scale? Why, why do we got two monitors? Oh, I see what happened. One second. <laughs> uh, let's just disable this one. Yes. All right. Kill you. Uh, we had to add a VGA driver. I think something in there really, uh, one of the manuals called for it. It tossed on a second screen. We don't want that. Oh, we still got the second screen anyways. Oof, I think we're going to have to kill that uh, secondary. I don't like it, but let's check to see if the looking glass service now started. Uh, let's go run. Sorry for the messed up screen. We're going to fix that shortly. Looking glass host, still automatic. Does not look like it starts. Probably going to error out. Did not error out. All right, we're good. So looking glass looks like it is going. Sweet. So we're going to shut this down and then kill this secondary monitor. Uh, let's kill that. And we're going to edit this where it says video VGA. We're putting that to none. I don't know why this one called for a video uh, VGA. That was kind of a weird instruction. Maybe I misunderstood it uh, when I was reading the guide. Yeah, VNC is crap. You're never going to use it. it it's just a, a fail, fail safe for when uh, trying to connect to the client. Once you get everything set up, we won't use VNC at all to connect to it. Ah, it's not up yet. We'll wait for this uh, to flatline and then connect to it again. <laughs> What's up, Blue? <laughs> Secretly streaming, I know. I wanted to get this video out. I was like, ah, I need to, I need to get it done. If I only got a couple people watching me, it makes it easier to fly through all these things. You now know my secret. All right, here we go. Now we're looking good. We got looking glass. Now on startup, we want to make sure looking glass is launching automatically. And I think, okay, it is perfect. So looking glass is going. We've got the service going automatically. And now if uh, for the moment of truth, I think we're just going to go Let's do looking glass from terminal, looking glass host. Okay. Now, how do you launch looking glass? I can't remember what I was doing. Actually, my bash RC had it. Okay. I had looking glass, uh, looking glass client dash F. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I installed the wrong thing. Such a goob. Okay. So we're going to just go remove looking glass host. Yeah, we're going to just remove that. Let's uh, install just looking glass. And then I think we just do looking glass dash F and that should get us what we need. Okay. Bam. You're in my stream destructing the yeah, no, it's all good. Uh, some, some of this, sometimes I love Twitch chat. Sometimes it's really nice when you're working and doing something. Sometimes it's a bit of distraction, you know, it just depends on what you're doing. Like when I'm doing programming and I'm a complete noob at something, I love Twitch chat because they always call me out because I don't know something. But when I'm on the other end of the spectrum and I'm doing something relatively complex, there's not a whole lot of people in the world that can help me. 
it's more of like, all right, let's get this shit done. <laughs> I'm going to just get <laughs> chats along for the ride. Buckle up, jump in the back seat, and let's get going. <laughs> and that's kind of where we're at tonight. It's like, I, I want to get this done, but I, I want people to actually uh, see what we're doing as well. So if we go looking glass clients full screen, give me something. Well, it's something. All right. Uh, what happened? Unsupported invalid frame rotation. I think the shim from the memory is not properly, not properly reading it. Uh, I think we missed something. I want to say maybe the, no, we added that. Let's go dev shim looking glass. Let's see what that uh, variable dev shim. Okay. Let's do a all listing Titus libvert. Okay. Yeah. We have proper ownership of it. Let's try it again. Nah, invalid frame rotation. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping in blue. Uh, let's see what we got. All right. We got Wayland support. Yes. Vsync. No presets host. I don't think we need to do that. So let's go back to looking glass dot IO and let's go download now. So the windows host binary is right here. We wanted the client to connect to it. I'm thinking what's going on here, guys, what's causing the issue. I think there's a, a missing dependency. So this right here, it, it's trying to display something, but I think what's going on is we're missing a dependency for the the support for the, for this resolution and once we get that i think we'll be fine invalid frame rotation support and uh, let's let's do a quick google search for looking glass uh looking glass and we're going to type that in troubleshooting oh what is this hollow place studio this is something different. Never mind. Um, unsupported looking glass troubles. Troubles launching. Just to rule out dependency issues, what I'm going to do is let's go to the documentation and installation. All right. We've already gone through that. Let's go client application. I think what we'll do is we'll build it directly. Um, download the stable version so we go to the download page stable version source we grab looking glass b6 targe gz and let's i think we build all that from source i think we can use this client binary that we did from aur but i think it screwed up and didn't grab something it just i just got that feeling um so let's do a tar XV, uh, XVF and we're going to just take this thing and we're going to come right into here and do this thing. Documentation, installation, uh, pretty basic ex extraction, uh, client application, just a make install. And then we're just going to do a C make. Okay. Make install. Okay. No make configure. Wait, what, uh, what do we got? First, you must build, see building. Okay, grab it, install. Okay. Uh, let's grab all these dependencies. Uh, let's just go looking glass install. Someone probably done a copy paste. Fedora, Arch. Here we go. Let's grab this. All right. We're going to install that. Install additional dependencies for kernel module build. Sure. I don't think we'll possibly, we, we may need this, may not. We'll see. You can do scroll lock R to rotate the output clockwise by 90 degree increments. Really? All right, we're gonna grab these DKMS modules. I don't even know if I have scroll lock on this damn keyboard. <laughs> uh, I'm, I just wanna knock out these dependencies though, just to make sure we're not missing anything. So we got that. Um, 
These dependencies are required by default, but may be omitted if you disable when running CMake. That's fine, we're not gonna do that. Fetching, building, let's go here in this, and then we just do a C make, and then do a make. C make looks like it fired off without any, any headache. Now we just do a make, build it up. You'd be shocked how many times you know, you got an AUR that just craps out on you. AUR is not exactly the best for a lot of things. A lot of times you just can't beat a just a plain old fashioned build. So then you have that and then just run it directly. Now this is client install. Let's, let's try to look at client usage. Let's just come into here. Let's do LL, all right. CD client, CD build. And there's a looking glass client. Should be able to read and execute by anybody. So now looking glass, F, maybe? Starting session. Yeah, I mean, Xeon with too much RAM, too much storage, just install all the dependencies. <laughs> okay, huh. It seems like it was doing something there. Interesting. It's kind of weird, uh, I think there's like a a copyright signal in Windows that's like some kind of, uh, I forget what it's called, but uh, every time I, I got a Windows signal, it looks like it kills it. That's interesting. All right. Now, caption card's not messing it up. I mean, it, it, it sure seems like it's working, but then it's just bombing out. I almost feel like doing a quick reboot. I feel like there's just something missing there. All right. Yeah, I, I know the capture card's going in and out, but I think that's something with uh, that, because as soon as I'm on Linux, it comes right back. So I don't think it's hardware related at all. Let's reboot. I think that's what we'll do. Uh, let's just go ahead, shut that down. Is we've, we've done a lot to the system itself, and I kind of want to just shut this down, reboot, have a really nice fresh system because we've done a lot of system modifications and everything looks good. And I do think there was a dependency because the first time we ran that client, it was all garbly gook. And then this time it's just showing the purple screen, which tells me we are very, very close. Uh, what's, what's, does, is the VNC still there? Okay. VNC is still working. Let's shut it down here. Did I download the RC? I just noticed something right as I was shutting down. It showed the fold a uh, folder RC1 uh, R7, and if we look at our host, we installed uh, R6. I think that would make a big difference. Okay, before we reboot, actually, I think that was the problem. Now I don't think it's Nvidia, because at this point Nvidia is thinks it's in Windows. NVIDIA can't even see Linux exists because the entire uh, PCIe IDs have been uh, block listed. So the only thing it should see is Windows. So the card itself is be like, hey, what OS am I in? And it's like, you're only in Windows because if the VM's not running, uh, the system basically doesn't show any uh, any anything. It just loads right into the VFIO module and, and it's just gonna see nothing. Yeah, I think B6 is what we're rocking for the client. And I think I installed B7 host, uh, B7 RC1. Uh, as we were leaving, I caught a glimpse of the folder and I was like, wait a second, which looking glass is this? It's B7 RC1 host. Well, no wonder it's not working because I installed the wrong version like a big idiot. Ah, uh, yeah, B7 RC1. I'm such a goob. One second, let's grab the correct version. That'll help. So I did grab both versions, but I somehow, uh, there's my Winget fix too. I gotta fix that up later this week, I will. Let's just run that. Probably should extract it first, but whatever. All right, desktop, install. All right, we got B6 going, stable. Let's go refresh, looking glass, B6, perfect. 
and that's going and let's just give this a restart I mean I guess it is 122 in the morning so <laughs> mistakes will happen if anything I'm probably making less mistakes than I usually do at one o'clock in the afternoon yeah go figure that one out time for coffee nah I don't do caffeine past 3 p.m. usually that's my cutoff I will grab some water though important to stay hydrated oh man <laughs> AI's forcing me seven up no all right here we go we're back up and going um on this one let's double check to make sure the service is going we pull up services.msc. We should see looking glass running. Perfect. All right, let's disconnect. Now, looking glass client. Let's try full screen. Look at this. This is crazy. For some odd reason, when it's out here, it's not there. But as soon as I go to here, what the world? The capture card cuts out whenever the image of Windows is on. What's that about? Oh, it's working. Kinda. Yeah, it might be Elgato. Uh, looking glass. Can we, looking glass. Ah, I can't run looking glass this way. It might be a Wayland thing. Let's try to run uh, the looking glass client now. Uh, without full screen, uh, what were our options? We could go, we got spice. No, no, no. Shrink and upscale, full screen, no. Wind size is 1024 by 768. I wonder, is there like a looking glass configuration file? How do you set the initial size? I think what we'll do, let's just go auto resize. Let's just go uh, dash A. So let's go looking glass client dash A. Okay. All right. Well, that works pretty darn good. How about our hotkeys? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, you know, um, we'll have to work on keyboard capture. That'll be interesting, but we now have a full-blown looking glass. Why does this look so huge? Let's see, what what's the display settings here? It's 1080p, scale. Let's go 100, please. Uh, actually, let's go 125. Perfect. Nice. So that's looking glass. What do we want to do to test this thing? There is definitely some issue with full screen mode when it cutting out. Hmm. I know. I kind of want to. Do we drop to uh, Xorg just to see if that's just something that is prominent in Plasma? It could be a Plasma problem too. Maybe Plasma shooting something strange to the capture card. Uh, let's see. What do we have for? We still have to pass through the PCIe adapter as well because if I want to, like, let's say I'm I'm filming in windows i want everybody like if i if i need to plug in like a usb drive or something like that and interface directly with the windows instance uh or oh actually i'll need it for like a token like i have a uh, two-factor like a yubi key uh, for certain passwords that are exclusive to windows I'll, i want to make sure i have native usb because you can't emulate a usb port through either so you you that's why i have a usb card in here uh as well so we'll, we're passing through our drive it says qmu hard disk but that is actually pretty much passed through i probably could do a better job passing it through yeah i mean it's good enough i don't think we're gonna run into problems let's let's install steam i suppose and 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 then mess around with that so let's go irm IX and uh, I want to just kind of look at uh, graphics and make sure we, we got uh, good graphics performance here because that's obviously something that we'd use the PCI pass through for um, if we look for games 
Do I don't have steam on here? Oh no, I do. Let's let's do some steam action. Why not run B7 RC1? It's way faster. I mean, I mean, I guess this is just the stable version. We could always switch over to RC1. Uh, uh, RC, uh, what is it? B7 RC1. Sorry. Um, this seems plenty fast to me, though. Let's grab our updates. Now we are using bridged, so we shouldn't have any slowdown on networking. It's not having to go through some kind of crappy network address translation layer. We don't have any slowdown on our hard drive. That should be pretty much passing through there. Um, on the download and transfer rates on here, I think we'll... Uh, Cyberpunk might take too long because it's like 150 gigs. But let me... Uh, one second. Let me grab... Oh, shoot. I got to get my phone. Dang it. All right. All right. Let's go. Silly uh, two-factor here. Bam. All right. Here we go. Let's get it. So we should have two terabytes of data. Just waiting here on just the standard one. Let's grab Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, sure. Let's install that. We got 1.8 terabytes free. Toss it on here. And then let's see what we got for download. We shouldn't see any kind of strangulation. Uh, for MBS, we should be close to a thousand, I think. Let's see what this uh, maxes out at. Disk usage, I mean, everything should be about a thousand. I am looking forward to the Elden Ring DLC big time. All right, 700, I guess. I mean, I guess it's not bad for a virtual machine, huh? We'll let that go in the background. Yeah, it's looking good so far. Uh, pretty solid transfer rates at seven, 700 megabits per second. Disk usage. Uh, it hadn't hit the gig marker, but close. It looks like the, the network's what's throttling it the most. Even with the bridge... I think we're losing a little bit of speed, but not bad. Not not terrible. This uh, transfer of Cyberpunk takes roughly about nine minutes, ten minutes. So it should be pretty pretty good. Uh, OS drive right now is uh, two terabyte. Well, this drive we actually have a lot. So for for storage on here. We can do an NFS drive and play right off the network. That has about 100 terabytes of storage on it. That's terabytes with a T, not G. <laughs> and then local storage, we have two terabytes on the Linux one on an NVMe. We have two terabytes of storage of on, on the Windows side of things on its own separate NVMe. And then we have... Uh, three gigs just kind of chilling in a raid mirror raid and then we have four ssds varying sizes usually only like 100 to 500 gigs for a variety of different things uh, they're all hot swappable so we can just pull them out and pop in new drives and have a full full sata capabilities to do all kinds of crazy shenanigans that we want to do it's it, it's a beast the ultimate system is what the title of this stream is and i really wanted the ultimate system so that's what we're going with on it we got rid of the old ryzen 5600x yeah well, let's pull up neo fetch too why this is transferring we still got seven minutes left i think uh we'll keep an eye on that but 800 megabits per second has pretty darn solid uh let's can we just grab that? Let's put that over there for now. Oh, wait. Uh, Looking Glass is launched through that. Ah, let's just pull up another one. Um, Neo Fetch. Ah. Well, actually, Neo Fetch. So that'll give you a little readout of the system. Uh, I don't think... Uh, you know, Dark Sky, I don't play that many games. And I really got to be interested in a game. And... You know, a lot of games I play these days are pretty old and they don't require much space. 
if it's a new game like Elden Ring, I'll install it. Just just straight up on the NVMe drive. I can, uh, I do have an iSCSI target that we can actually attach to. I have five terabytes on that. And that iSCSI target just kind of has a whole mess of Steam games. Technically, I could have just pulled in the iSCSI target, but it's currently connected to my inside PC. Uh, iSCSI is a little bit different from NFS, but it just think of it as a a direct attached network storage. <laughs> it's a DAS type setup. And if you have a really strong network in your house, you can actually do that and it works just like an external drive. Uh, it's actually faster than most USB external drives. <laughs> Yeah, I think what we'll, you know, after messing around on Plasma 6, it's funny you say that. I don't know if I plan on staying on Plasma 6 because, I mean, it's fun and all, and I think I might use it as like a fallback, but uh, I don't know. I kind of miss my tiling window managers, to be honest with you. It, it, it doesn't feel as smooth and fast is just doing it through a window manager i think window managers has just ruined me <laughs> i mean given my way i probably will just install dwm and call it a, call it good and be like all right cool i got my own sled up with my own workspaces solid uh i really want to switch over to hyperland as well and, and get that going but this is a fresh plasma install uh plasma 6.0.1 and it's pretty good. I mean, overall, I mean, it's not that many packages. I didn't install like the big meta package. We just did Plasma Desktop. So none of that like Contact and Conquer and all that other crap that comes with KDE, the full blown one. We didn't do that. The base install those very, very lightweight. I think when we measured the memory on it, uh, the memory was only like six or 700 megs. Very, very, very affordable and uh, nice. Uh, everything else worked pretty good. I liked a lot of the changes. It's been a while since I've used KDE. And KDE is always my favorite desktop environment when I use desktop environments. Uh, but as far as using it on a daily basis, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I kind of, I kind of like... Yeesh, I, I, I almost want to install DWM on this stream and then just try it out. I mean, hell, we've only been streaming for uh, only a little over an hour. We got almost everything done. We got, I think we still got to do the PCIe pass through, but who cares about that? I mean, we've, we've done the GPU. We've done the hard drive. We've done all the heavy lifting. Uh, the USB, I can do that later. I'm not feeling like messing around with it. Hyperland really comes on its own once you get into beyond 1080p. Actually, uh, it's kind of funny you say that, SK. Uh, one thing I loved about Hyperland was you could program specific monitors with specific resolutions when they connect to them. So I have at my work a giant widescreen monitor, and I had Hyperland on my laptop, and I could just plug right into that, and it immediately read oh, I've seen this monitor before. You want this resolution and it needs to be oriented here. I've never seen a tiling window manager do that. And Hyperland does it. You can literally hard code all your monitors, their orientation and their resolution directly into the config file. And that is so freaking sweet. So kudos, kudos to Hyperland. I understand what you're talking about, man. It's, I, I totally anticipate moving to Hyperland uh, once I figured out my problem with Synergy, which is the big, big catch doing input leap. Yeah, we're still testing hyper, uh, Cyberpunk. It's going in the background. You can kind of see it back here. It, it's still transferring at, uh, actually, it's actually gone up a little higher. It's transferring at about 839. Pretty steady. The benefit of transferring and downloading at 1.40 in the morning is you get all the internet. <laughs> it's all to yourself. All the beauty of not doing it at peak business times. Uh, not much fluctuation here. 
That's that's looking pretty nice, actually. We got about a minute left on our Cyberpunk install. So we got that going for us. Uh, we got pull up NeoFetch again. Oh, you guys kind of seen NeoFetch. We can close that out. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we can do some chat while this finishes up. What happened to your Proxmox mini PC, Sarah? Uh, it's actually still back there. I, I'm not really using it. Now that I have this beast, I probably will just leave this beast on. Although, what are my wattage right now? Yeah, shit. Uh, right now, we're pulling about 660 watts. Yikes. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that's going to be an energy bill. Okay, never mind. Leaving this system on with everything loaded up, not really an option. I'm not a millionaire, and my energy bill would be like five or six hundred bucks. Uh, well, no, I'm probably not that high. That's still a lot of watts, though. It, bouncing around the upper six hundreds. I mean, get put it in context. A light in your house on like LED lights are like usually si uh, sip about two to three watts. Uh, hell, I don't even think they use that much. I, it's not very much, though. Yeah. And it is a little bit under load, but I don't know. Oh, look at that disk transfer usage. Look at this. I got to pull it over so you guys can see. Look at that. Disk usage peaked around almost four gigabits per second. Yeah. So we're not going to run into any bottlenecks on this. Hell, most people's regular systems don't transfer that fast. So we're very solid on disk usage networking the bridge networking is working pretty good i mean if we wanted to get 10 g uh, 10 gig speeds obviously bridge might not be the way to go we probably would pass through a 10 g card and then do it that way uh but i don't think we need it it's just windows one gig will be fine aren't you in texas just install a solar panel eh, that's fair I don't know what the array would look like, but I definitely am interested. Yeah, so the, the virtualization on this is pretty, pretty good. Now, we're still slipping in and out of this looking glass, so I kind of need full screen to work, and I think it's because of Wayland. Is, is this like X Wayland that it's wrapping? Is this wrapping it in X Wayland? That's probably the problem probably the problem <laughs> uh let's see oh uh, let's just go h top i got I, oh shoot i got too many damn okay well let's go b top uh k win whalen k win whalen looking glass a i don't know on this no it is yeah look it's using x whalen i think yeah, I think it's using Xor, guys. Well, screw Wayland. I don't want to use X Wayland on top of Wayland. It's just using Xorg and Wayland. It's freaking pointless. I mean, I guess it's okay, but I don't know. It's late. I'm like, hmm. I don't know if I like that or not. Just my two cents. Anyways, let's uh let's benchmark this guy. I think so far we've tested disk usage, we've tested networking. I think we got to stretch the legs of the GPU now and uh, test old Cyberpunk and have that run through. Yeah, four gigabit, four gigabits per second is roughly fi uh, 500 megabytes <laughs> per second. Now you just divide it by eight. Uh, I don't. Anytime you have anybody that like wanting to flex on like their, you know, speed of the internet and those types of things, they always put it in bits because everything is times by eight. But if they put it in bytes, that's actually probably a little bit more practical. All right, let's play. Here we go. We shouldn't run any problems. It's all native Windows, so first load. Yeah, sure. Now, as far as audio, that's another thing I think we probably should explore too. All right. Because we're going to want audio and looking glass. Uh, although, I think I can pull that in like through Scream and some other things. Oh, crap. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that works. Let's go to settings. Uh, graphics. Okay. Well, can we tab over? 
two. Oh, okay. Run benchmark. Uh, what are we at? Ray tracing low, DLSS, super resolution scaling. Um, no, I think it, no ray tracing. This is a 2060. I'm not trying to kill this thing. Come on now. Although 80 field of view. Who's, come on. We're not an old man. Not that old. Although I am so old, like I'm not going to do like motion blur or lens flares. What is this? This is not a Michael Bay film. And film Graham is also stupid. I don't like that either. All right. Anyways, sorry. Just personal preference here. But that's kind of what I'd, I'd jam with. With a 2060, that's probably the settings I would pick. Let's run benchmarks to get like a 60 FPS is really what we're looking for. Wait, cancel. Do we save? Is there a save button? All right, run. Uh, okay, close. Yeah, okay. Confirm. Oh, field of view quake. Yeah, I'm, I am old school on the quake. I did compete back in the 90s in quake. I don't think I was all that great, but I was able to win some cash prizes. All right, cool. That looks about what I expected from a 2060. 60 to 70 FPS. Nothing too shabby. Now, the funny thing is, if we go to the native, it's running on a 7800 XT. So the FPS is going to just be <laughs> light years ahead of what we're getting here. So I really wouldn't, uh, really wouldn't do this in practical like gameplay. I would just load it up in Linux at that point. This this game works really good in Linux. Uh, yeah, I did a full reinstall nav. It was it was. I looked at it and I was like, do I really want to mess around with this? And I was like, nah, let's just nuke and pave. It's gonna be easier. All right, uh, average FPS seventy three with a twenty sixty. Um, everything looks good. It's exactly kind of what I wanted from from this test. Obviously, doing looking glass in full screen, mandatory. I, I kind of want to flip over and try this in like a, a Wayland setup kind of kind of deal or a Xorg setup. So let's close this and we're going to just shut this guy down. And then this should close out a looking glass. So that works pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. Uh, someone benchmarked Cyberpunk and Luchers and got very poor numbers. Really? Oh yeah, burning the midnight oil for sure. I was like, I have to get this built and done. Well, I would say, like if we take, oh geez, do I have it loaded up here? Let's see if, if it's installed, we can go ahead and run it. Just to show you the difference. Uh, I think Steam runtime. Xorg works better with NVIDIA. Well, that NVIDIA was actually uh, Windows. That was a bare metal Windows, basically. This is Linux. I know, kind of confusing, but... Yeah, we got Cyberpunk. All right, so now you guys saw the 2060. Well, let's see it on... Uh, I don't think we've done a benchmark on this system yet. I think we probably toss. We're we're gonna turn ray tracing off though, just just so we can just spank the Windows 2060. We'll we'll, we'll still crank up some of the effects and things of that nature though. <laughs> 2060 still probably shaking maybe. Well, oh, this 7800 XT probably won't even break a sweat, but let's see. Um, let's go defaults. What do we got? Texture quality high, super resolution, image sharpening, sure. Let's turn ray tracing off. Same, get rid of the same garbage I hate. We'll just leave everything on high. So high and ultra almost all the way through. We're not gonna do motion motion blur, lens flare, or film grain, uh, field of view of 90, uh, crowd density high, no ray tracing, texture quality high. And this is the AMD section of the test. Let's confirm. It was resolution 50% there. We might need to come back. Oh, what is the power draw? Ooh. All right, power draw, we're up to 780. Oh, we are running into problems with this. Huh. 
Well, I guess my, I think my, what in the hell? I think the full screen mode in, in Linux is causing it to cut out, like cut in and out. I think it's a Wayland thing. Oh, is it 7,700 XT? Uh, we're on 1080p. I think it's Wayland. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Yeah, we're about 760, 7060 watts. Um, well, this was a terrible, this was just awful. Uh, we ended up getting 57 average FPS with a 7800 XT. <laughs> the power of Linux. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, let's hope no Windows fanboy watches this stream back. <laughs> That's some ammunition for you. Uh, let's get out of this full screen mode. I think it's something with Waylon. I think it's something with Waylon. Let's go to Xorg. I think this is crap. All right. Out of here. Out of here. Okay. Let's... Do we have a GitHub? I think I do. Uh, what are we, hmm. All right, let's see what we have. What are we using? Uh, Xset, Flameshot, Dunst, Pycom. Oh, let's make sure we get all these things. Uh, I've <laughs> uh, been in uh, Debian a little too much lately. Flameshot, Dunst, Pycom, and Fay, Synergy. Let's grab all those. What else we need? Yay. Uh, we already got XDG desktop portable. Uh, do we need like Dbus? I think, uh, oops. No, Dbus is already there. Was there a Dbus like package we needed to grab though? I feel like there was. Uh, da, 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 da. Dbus broker. Maybe not. Extra. No, no. All right. Yeah, this is just AURs. Uh, once we get past here, I'm just going to be like, if it's not in the official repos, then it's nothing I need. Yeah, most of all the debus stuff's already installed, so I'll, I want to say we'll be okay. Debus activation, uh, debus update. Let's see if that's there. Debus update activation environment. It's there. Okay, so all that's looking good. Xset DKMS. What else do we have? Oh, this is using Florp and Thunar. All right. We're going to need Thunar. All righty. Let's stash these changes. I'm kind of curious to see what I was doing here. Do we have a mixer too? A mixer. I want to say that's uh, also utility. Like also util. Yeah. Also utils probably is a mixer. Yeah. A mixer is right there. Cool. Uh, X backlight, not really needed. And yeah, that's good. Thorium browser is, that's what we need to grab. I'm just grabbing some dependencies from my, oh, huh. all right. Uh, this is DWM. Yeah. Gar got it. Uh, what else we got? Can't mistake the C. I think there's some other things in here I probably need to mess around with some more but this is my flavor of DWM take it for what it wills I, I I like it because anytime I run it shit just works just always works I don't like that uh thorium dash browser that should be good um probably gonna need if I do a make it's probably not good oh no it bom didn't bomb out okay cool uh, let's take our, uh, let's go sudo copy DWM dot desktop. Where does it keep the desktop sessions? Where is that? I want to say it's under USR share. Yes. X sessions maybe, or is it just sessions? No. Where does it keep the sessions? Yeah. I thought X sessions, X sessions. Yeah. X sessions. Perfect. So if we do an LS of uh, USRX sessions, we got DWM and we got Plasma. Cool. Uh, as far as SDDM, 
I think we can just exit. That's fine. The Win 11 is shut down. Got that. Well, the thing I want to test is that Cyberpunk score was just complete dog poo. And I'm like, was that Wayland doing that? Like, what, what caused that? That seemed very odd. So we're going to just log out, come back into here, go into DWM. Now we're going to come back into like a tried and true uh, Tylen window set up for me. Now with this, this is, this is like my basic setup. I love it because it's no frills and oh, just things just work so seamless. Oh, old friend. Oh, just like a warm hug from an old friend. Ah, home. Ah, it feels good. Feels like I was just in a, living in a stranger's house for a little bit there. All right. Now, let's see. Uh, now, what would I do with... Was it... No? Hmm. Oh. Problem. I forgot to install Rofi. <laughs> uh, I was like, um, nothing's working. Now, there we go. Let's launch that. Uh, you, should we try Looking Glass again just to see? I kind of want to just see Cyberpunk again. Mainly because, man, that was just awful. One thing I had to do with the 7800 XT was use last LACT to get the fans working on Arch. Couldn't get full performance until I did it. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. We're definitely going to have to take a peek at that because this performance was not correct. I don't... Proton version wouldn't tank it by 50%. I mean, it was... That was a substantial performance hit. I don't... I don't see how that could happen. What's with the double enter in these long intro screens? Do, do like, gaming companies just hate their users now? Just, uh... My thought of the day. All right. No HDR, 1080, window borderless, no V-Sync. Cool. Maximum FPS. Oh, no. No. Uncapped. Graphics. Uh, what do you guys think? Anything? I mean, honestly, image sharpening 50%. That should, if anything, boost resolution, right? Or boost frame rates. All right, let's, let's just run it again. Because I, I don't even change anything. Is it something with... Because Waylon was cutting in and out, remember? Or we, we, let's see if we get the black screen. If you guys... It, the, the, the capture card was just completely dying on us. Okay. Well, I guess it's better than Waylon. At least it's not cutting out anymore. I think it was like a plasma Waylon session problem. Because now the capture seems okay. I bet you we can run looking glass perfectly. I mean... I think we need to look at the LACT that Snow Puppy mentioned on the 7800 XT. Uh, for this card, this is equivalent or on par with the 4070 Super. To put it in perspective in NVIDIA terms, it should be... And, and honestly, we still have like FSR 50% going on too. So we have some scaling going on. Uh, this should be substantially higher. We are not getting the full performance of this card what's going on and i think that lact is with the what's going on with it yeah look at this now one thing i will say about this time around switching to xorg with my dwm rock solid as always just i i get in here and i'm like dude everything just works you know i'm like todd howard up here it just works <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to do Hyperland tonight. It's already 2 a.m. So that's uh, that's probably not going to work out. But I do want to see... I want to dive more into our performance issue with the 7800 XT. Yeah, what Puppy said with the LACT is something I haven't heard of yet. And I want to look at that GitHub. Let's just... Man, I don't want to... Let's just stop. Ah, no. Cancel. All right, let's pull up Chatterino. Grab that uh, from earlier. Oh, it just feels so good. Hmm. 
AMD GPU control application. What is this? Uh, install the AUR LACT. Really? Oh, that's cool. All right, let's. Did I change something with the split on my screen? I don't remember. <laughs> that's funny. Anyhow, um, I think I was tinkering around with my vertical split. Uh, let's go. Yay, S, L, A, C, T. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, re I forgot. I made this whole scene because of the split in DWM. Mm. So damn good. Okay. Sorry. Sidetracked. Southern Islands HD 7000 requires G AMD GPU SI support kernel option. Oh. Oh, no. I'm already in A3. Sorry. Yep. Support is limited. Power limited. But it is supported. This is unconfigurable temperature threshold below, which the fan does not get turned on. Even custom curve. The power cap is also sometimes lower than it should be. Requires kernel 6.7. See 255 for more. Really? Okay. Span speeds always show zero. Static fan doesn't work. Power limit can't be raised. Okay, whatever. I don't care about overclocking. Uh, can you still do like a speed ramp with LACT or the fan curve? If you can manage to replicate static speeds. Really? Look at that, guys. Uh, yeah, let's proceed. Yeah, I know. I love Workspace Zero. So good. Um, I don't know what I did with this specific uh, desktop. I can't even remember my hotkey for it, to be honest. What did I do with that? It was... uh. Let's say it was this. No. Let's just go Vim. What was the split? I can't remember what I was using to split. All right. So tiling mode. Okay. What was I doing? Focus stack. Changing the stack, I want to say. Uh, J and K. But is that a tiling? No? Huh. I wonder how I did this flat layout. Very interesting. What do I have? Yeah, sorry. I left plasma in the dust. I was like, I can't. I just can't. It sucks. Compared to this. So, yeah, it's not really moving. I mean, I could go with like a floating layout, but then I'm like, eh. I wanted to change the stack. And I can't remember what I did to change the stack. Toggle floating. Toggle view. Hmm. Not exactly what I wanted. So strange. What did I do? Move place, toggles. Can I do a... No. No, I cannot. All right. Uh, it's fine. How are we doing? LACT is on the way. This should fix our woes, our performance woes on the gaming side of things. And finally, we do need to... Is, can we just do a looking glass? So if we do looking glass for... Oh, oh well, der. <laughs> uh, it's going to help if we actually launch in the system. It's like, oh, it didn't connect. <laughs> yeah, it helps if you turn it on. All right. So... No, Mac OS, I'm kind of like, eesh, I'm a little bit out on. Ever since they moved to their own proprietary thing, I'm kind of, I don't know, the days of me and Mac are, I think, might be numbered. I do still miss doing, uh, I mentioned it, I think, in a prior stream. I still miss editing in Final Cut Pro. Like, DaVinci Resolve is good, but I still miss, uh, there's some things about Final Cut Pro I still miss. That's, oh boy. I don't care who you are. That's sexy as hell. Yeah. Oh, man. That just feels nice. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. I can't wait to break it over my knee. But until that happens, we're going to leave it there. That, oh, I am home. That is so good. Would you recommend a VM for Windows gaming? No. I would not recommend anybody doing what I just did. 
because pretty much I'm to the spot where I can get Windows. Like I have Windows going right now. So let's say I'm in Linux here and I can I can bind a hotkey. So so what it look like is this. And I'd be like, bam. Now pretty much everybody just everybody would be like, I'm in Windows. There's no way to discern I'm in a virtual machine. Does it even show the flag in performance? Let's see. Ah, it does show a virtual machine down here. Yes. So it does say I'm in a virtual machine here. But damn. I mean, it's it's working really, really smooth. That's working really good. So I can game in Windows while being in Linux. So the cool thing about this is, let's say I do have this up and I load up a game, I can just go, bam. Okay, I got this, look it up, and then immediately just jump right back. I mean, just really fast. Oh, I don't care who you are. That's just, that's just awesome. Okay. <laughs> Scott's like, I just threw up in my mouth. Oh, great. All right, let's see if we can't fix LACT uh, now that we've gotten that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut down this. I think we we've we have pretty much gotten all that we got to do here done. Now I just want to troubleshoot a little bit on the Linux side of things and uh, get that working. So if we go, let's let's just close this and go LACT. OK, to enable the deal, run this command. Oh. We're missing an X clip. My clipboard's not working. My oh, bad. There we go. Okay. Then we got that. OC. Thermals. This shows automatic, but the fan speed shows a zero RPM. And that was the problem we were having. Uh, server's chugging about 700 watts during benchmarks. All right. We are on 6.7.9 for the Arch kernel. Fan control functionality is not available. Power usage limit. Performance lever. Hmm. So can we go static on the fan control? I guess I should have finished reading. Okay. Oh, it says under OC tab. Uh, I thought there was something I need to do. Here, let's let's just push this to... Uh, here, I'm going to just close that. Uh, for now. Okay. Under the OC tab, we got power states and should be a button to enable OC stuff in the top right. Enable overclocking. To enable overclocking feature, creating the file etc overdrive.conf and updating init ran f. Or she want to do this. The GUI will freeze for a little bit. Okay. Cannot open module comp file permission. Well, yeah. Can we do like a pseudo LACT? Sorry. Sorry to blind you guys. Wake me up. We need to run this as, as root pseudo. Going blind. Ah, it's so bright. Ah, little sun. Uh, it's gonna, it, it's probably, it's, it's adding this mod probe comp file and updating init RAM in the background. Uh, once that's done, the GUI f is frozen for that. Technically, the dev said it'll be frozen for a bit. Your definition of a bit, my a bit, probably like a minute or two. I would say a minute. In it, RAM FS is usually like uh, two minutes. I think, yeah, there we go. Overclocking successfully in the middle. System reboot is required to apply changes. Init RAM was successfully regenerated. Nice. Okay. So then we got that. Close that guy. Close that guy. Close that guy. Reboot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Snow Puppy, I think that's the difference between, you know, it, it, Wayland, I know everyone loves to talk about how awesome it is, but, you know, Xorg sometimes just works. And if you're rocking what I'm rocking, I don't know, man. I don't know if you're going to find better in a DWM situation for just straight raw performance. 
Now, having said that, I will concede Hyperland is a hell of a lot cooler. This is this is like a no frills type setup that I have. But if you just want raw performance, uh, I don't see anybody beating me. Yeah, Xorg just works. <laughs> and I think we proved that. I still kind of, the one thing I'm like a little bit of a mystery this whole stream is what the hell's going on with Wayland and my capture card? Like capture card specifically full screen applications in Wayland. Something's up there. Okay, so we're back. Uh, let's launch LACT. OC. We've got our overclocking enabled. Configuration mode basic. So what are we doing here? What what are we what are we trying to accomplish? Are we getting any thermals? We're not getting anything there, but we do have access to the fan speed now. Oh, can we do like a basic curve? Oh, okay. Let's just do a basic curve based on temperature. Ah, okay. I think I'll do a fan curve like this. Apply it. Yes, keep the changes. So we got the curve and now the uh, fans should kick on and spin up whenever the the thermals increase now does it show thermals anywhere in here so we got gpu usage power usage throttling no gpu temperature hotspot it is reading the hotspot so technically when it comes to thermals and the curve it should work all right we're just we're just man i need to do more late night streams we're just solving everything today this would have been like 10 streams if I did it at 9 a.m. It's just facts. Uh, this is LACT, Scott. All right, now we're going to do Cyberpunk again. I think I've always been that way. I figured as I got older, I'd get like, I'd start waking up earlier. Well, sometimes I do. Sometimes I can get to bed by like 10 p.m. usually, you know, probably about 10, 10 30 is usually my bedtime. And I'll usually get to bed and I'll wake up usually around like 6.30 a.m., 7 a.m. And be completely worthless. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting older now. I can actually get to bed earlier and wake up earlier. I figured that out. But my brain still hasn't. It just is like, hey, sorry. Sorry about you. <laughs> You're just going to be worthless. You're just going to drool on yourself for about two or three hours after you wake up. That's just the way it is. All right. We got this. All right. We're going to just run it as is. Let's see what we get. Confirm. All right. We want to see 100 FPS here. We should see that fan curve get enabled. Should I flip over to LACT and see if it does it? All right. Well, let's see first. Shit. Still problem with FPS. Yeah. GPU usage. Bouncing all over the place. GPU temperature. I think we need to be a little more aggressive on the 50s. 57 now. It, it's the same result. Is it better? Well, we got 57 last time. So let's see if it's actually better. I don't think it's better. If it is better... It means the fan was kicking on a little bit, but we need to be more aggressive with the curve. I want to say it'll probably still be about a 50, you know, probably around 57, give one or two uh, digits either way. Okay, yeah, 59. So I think, okay, let's exit. Let's be a little more aggressive with the thermals. The curve, 50%. I don't know if it's able to actually spin up. Can we just go 50? Let's go suck having to set my static fan every time I want to mess with it. All right. Set the... I'm not going to go all the way to 100. We'll go 80. Yeah, it's still not... I don't hear the fan kicking on. Okay, there we go. So now this is at 2600. All right, that's, that's pretty close. Okay, it's still being worked on upstream. Uh, read Gore Towers. Oh, turn RT on. Apply and then again off. 
and apply. Sometimes it's bugged. Okay. Okay, that did work. And then it just kicked off the fan. It's so strange. Okay. Let's go into settings. Let's try ray tracing on. Apply. Ray tracing off. Apply. Run the benchmark. Now, if I don't hear that fan kick on pretty close, I think I'm going to just throw it on static and then just crank it. I don't hear it. Wait, there it goes. Still performing like dog poo, but I think it's just a bug. Um, like you said, I think it's a bug in the kernel with this specific model, the GPU. Custom fan curve, I think, is helping. I think we might even get in the 60s this time around. Maybe. If it drops in the 40s when we get to palm trees, then we know it didn't. Ah, shit, it's just dropping. Yeah, 40s. Bam. Interesting. An interesting bug in Linux there. I'm sure they'll patch it. It's just a matter of time, but same result. Very, very interesting. I almost, before we exit, one more test. So this one, we're going to take the thermals. We're going to put it at like an 85. I don't want to go all the way to 100. So I'm going to crank up those thermals. We're going to come over here. I can hear the fans going, so I know that is working. And we're going to run the benchmark again. I want to see if it's even adjusting the clock speeds. What I think's happening here is the driver itself is not adjusting the P states and it's not in elevating from that standard, you know, uh, standby state and adjusting those clock speeds to higher clock speeds and what we're getting is low FPS because it's just stuck in that setting. It's not even overheating because it's not even adjusting the fans. Yeah, look at this. It's the same. It's the exact same. I don't even need to finish this. It's not a, it's not a heating issue at all. It's, it's not even a very interesting. Ah, performance levels, default, automatic. And then it's, it's not actually changing any of these. Wow. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I got this freaking awesome card in my system that is uh, basically a uh, freaking paperweight. Might as well have have an old R RX 580 in here. Might get even better performance. Interesting. I guess I could install the... I, uh, does AMD GPU drivers even work? No, it doesn't even work in Arch. I don't even think they make them. I'm trying to think of other ways to use a proprietary driver maybe to get around it, but I think we'll just have to wait for it to get patched. All right. Well, I think we got everything done today, guys. Uh, wow. What a what a very productive late night session we had. I think at this point in time, I'm going to shut it down. It was very good. We got a, a really solid thing. We went and explored and got a GPU pass through done. We got looking glass installed and configured. We went ahead and switched from plasma over to DWM using Xorg. I do love this setup a lot better. It's much more snappy. It just feels a lot better. I do want to install Hyperland and move to that. Maybe in the next stream, we explore Hyperland a little bit more. Maybe try to get input leap working and some other fun factor so I can switch between my upper production PC and this one. That'd be fun. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's where we're going to leave it for today. And then figuring out the bug with the 7800 XT in Arch Linux, I, I'm kind of curious to see. I think that probably Debian users, you could use the proprietary AMD drivers and get around this. But in the meantime, I guess we just kind of have to keep our ear to the ground. I did not realize that the 7800 XT was not working that well in Arch. Kind of a bummer, but I'm not, I'm not reinstalling. No, not happening. Mm. Uh, any thought on Proxmox in this system? Um, I don't think we use Proxmox because Proxmox just uses QMU. Uh, we, we can do our own virtualization and I don't want to leave this system on 24 seven either because this system hell under, under good load there, it was clocking in almost 800 Watts, which would bankrupt me. 
<laughs> the energy bill would be nuts. So I don't even want to think about that. But yeah. Yeah, a lot of issues were fixed with 6.7 kernel with RDNA 3 stuff. So rolling releases might be the best case for them. It's a lot worse, at least before 6.75. Okay. Yeah, we're on 6.79 right now, Snow Puffy. So we'll see what happens. Uh,. You know, I might try, we could even try like a Xan mod or a different, maybe a Zen kernel and try a different kernel on that front and go a little bit more bleeding edge. We could also try mainline kernel and go push it forward to like an RC and uh, see that as well. I'm kind of curious on, on how it is. When is another stream? Probably next week. I really wanted to get this stream done tonight. Mainly so I can watch Kung Fu Panda 4 with the kids tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, I just like, hey, I'll just sacrifice a little sleep. And then, you know, you know, I love Kung Fu Panda. It's great. I love the first three. Number four should be just as good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, so I won't be on tomorrow. Uh, or actually, it's today. 2.41. And then uh, uh, it's kind of spring break. So, I, you know, Wednesday I'll be at work. We're doing some moving and stuff, so I know I won't have any time on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be at my day job. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll probably take off. I might jump on Sunday night. We'll see. And then uh, definitely Monday or Tuesday. Uh, Monday, I'll probably be for filming full screen. So probably next Tuesday, I'm thinking, is going to be the next one. And we'll probably look at Hyperland and some other, uh, and other settings. I, I really... I don't know. It's gonna. It's gonna. I think as soon as I jump back into D D D W M, I was like, oh, I love this. It works so good. But I I still want to try Hyperland and go back to it too because it could be a lot of fun. And uh, I you know I'll I'll at least have it there to dive back into at least update because I know uh, was it Vaxery the the lead dev for Hyperland just is constantly doing updates. And I'd love to have it on my system and then test things out. I could probably even shoot him a message and he'd probably, probably at least hear me. And, uh, you know, he's really, really responsive anytime I've talked to him. And he plans to watch Dune 2. Already watched it, PSI. Freaking awesome. Loved Dune 2. It's great. Uh, it makes me want to reread the books. Uh, it's been a while. So I, I was reading Dune. Uh, not too long back, but I think I'm going to pick it back up. And then uh, I kind of want to get to like Children of Dune. Actually, ah, yeah. got, got this collector's item here. Here, I'll go full screen. We'll end on this stream on this note. The Dune Collection. Yeah, uh, you see <laughs> Dune, Dune regulars missing, but it's the original collection from 1980. So, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, God Emperor of Dune, all that's, uh, all that's in there. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth anything, but I like it. It's kind of, kind of a, a neat little, little thing in honor of Dune. I just put on the audiobook. I, I still like reading, man. Reading's fun. I think it's a, a cool, cool thing. I almost like reading more than playing games a lot these days, which is weird. I'm such a nerd. All right, y'all. <laughs> have a great one i'll see you guys next week probably unless something happens then i decide to get a wild hair and i stream this weekend but uh i really think we're at a good spot where i can get a lot of work done on this system and the new ultimate system is pretty much buttoned up and ready to roll for some actual work so super excited all right y'all have a fantastic night or morning or whatever it is it's it's late here. 3 a.m. almost now, so doses. <laughs>